tonight on U Central News. Homecoming week is in full effect. Hear about this week's revved up activities. In sports, this Bronco athlete is the talk of the town. Ian Nickel will have your rundown. Calling all Swifties, the last leg of the Ares Tour is packed with surprises and Easter eggs. Abby Avers will have more. Finally, the city is filled with fall festivities. Hear more from our U Central reporters. All this and more happening right now on U Central News. Live from Central Oklahoma, this is U Central News. Good evening, I'm Shanice Hopkins. And I'm Jeremy Ramirez. Welcome to this edition of U Central News. The presidential candidates are crisscrossing the seven battleground states in the final weeks before Election Day. They're working to appeal to any undecided voters, but polling shows the majority of voters have already decided who they will vote for. And with early voting underway, millions across the country have already cast their ballots. CNN's Washington correspondent, Julia Benbrook, reports. With just two weeks until Election Day, former President Donald Trump and Vice President Kamala Harris tailor their appearances and messaging to a shrinking group of available voters. We stand on the verge of the four greatest years in the history of our country. I believe that when we think about who we are as the American people, there is more we have in common than what separates us. Early voting is underway in most states, and as of Tuesday morning, nearly 16 million ballots had already been cast. I think everyone realizes this is probably one of the most important elections they're going to have in years, and then when they get, get it done. I wasn't even really thinking about voting early except for the fact that my daughter's back from college for, for fall break. So I just figured I'd go with her. While Democrats had a wide advantage over Republicans in pre-election voting four years ago, there's some evidence that the gap may not end up being quite so wide this year. Trump's campaign is making a last minute push to advocate for early and mail-in voting, despite years of the former president falsely painting these methods as dangerous and fraudulent. Trump has changed his tune for obvious reasons because he needs those votes and wants to get people out and some people just can't get out on one particular day. Polls continue to show there's no clear leader in the race for the White House. Reporting in Washington, I'm Julia Benbrook. Early voting in Oklahoma will be Wednesday through Saturday, October 30th through November 1st. Early voting must be done in the same county where one is registered. Over the past few months, many Americans have been bombarded with texts, emails, and calls from political candidates. And political signs have been planted nationwide. But one California resident wants answers from UPS after one of its drivers tried to deliver a political message in her yard. Carolina Estrada has more on the story. UPS is investigating one of its drivers after surveillance video caught him doing something unusual. He was not delivering a package to my house. He was delivering across the street. And uh, on, uh, on my ring, I saw that he put something on my lawn. When Shelly Bales checked the lawn of her Davis home, she found these, nearly a dozen small flags supporting former President Donald Trump's 2024 campaign. I was very surprised when I saw them. I was upset, and um, I don't get upset easily. In the video, you can see the man placing them along her lawn. We blurred his face because Davis police say no crime was committed. He really has no right. He's trespassing on my lawn. I don't think he had a right to be to do that. Bales removed the flags and is now demanding answers from UPS. In case he's doing it to other people, he should be stopped. In a statement to KCRA 3, UPS says in part, We respect the right of all Americans to support their chosen candidate. However, we ask our employees to express their political views on their own time. I have no idea why he did it. I can't imagine, you know, what he thought he'd gain by these little signs. As Election Day approaches, Bales hopes voters can respect each other. In Davis, Carolina Estrada, KCRA 3 News. Now here on campus, we've been experiencing blue skies and warm weather. We're going to toss it to Carly for our first look at weather. 
Thank you, Shanice, and welcome back, Broncos, to Central News. Um, we are going to take a look at our current conditions today. We are sitting at about 89 degrees, mostly sunny outside. We do have a little bit of wind at 6 miles per hour coming in from the southwest. Humidity is going to be at a 23% today, and it is going to feel like 93, and that's just because of that little bit of humidity we have going on. Looking at our wind map today, as you can see, nothing too crazy going on. We do have a little bit of gusts. Uh, these are the gusts, not the miles per hour. Um, we have a little bit going on. It is coming from the southwest part of the state, so it is going to come up from here to here. Um, we do have a little bit of a pressure system forming right around in this area, and we will be keeping an eye on that throughout the week. Uh, looking ahead, we are going to be seeing some highs in the 80s just for a couple of days. I know we had our fall weather, but we are kind of getting that warmer weather, but it's going to come back, I promise. We are going to have a, a couple chances of rain this weekend on Saturday and Sunday morning with 20% chances. And we ha it has been 27 days since our last significant amount of rain that we have had. So we are still keeping an eye on that fire danger risk and we, because of the drought, and we do not have that much rain. That's, it's just way too dry outside right now. I will have your full weather forecast after the break. Back to you guys at the desk. Thank you, Carly. The former CEO of Abercrombie & Fitch has been arrested on charges related to sex trafficking. Mike Jeffries and two other associates were arrested on Tuesday. The federal indictment alleges they ran a sex trafficking scheme between 2008 and 2015. They're accused of recruiting men who wanted to become models, then giving them drugs, alcohol, and Viagra at sex-themed parties. Jeffries and a second defendant are set to make their initial court appearances at a Florida federal court on Tuesday afternoon. A third is scheduled to make his initial appearance Tuesday afternoon at a federal court in Wisconsin. Back here on campus, there are several events to celebrate UCO's homecoming tomorrow, from decorating tote bags to a Bronco-related American Idol spinoff. Students can find different activities throughout the day. From 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. at Bronco Lake, you can decora decorate your own personalized tote bag. From 5 p.m. to 7 p.m., Capture the Flag will be held in Waltlin Hall. To finish off the day, Bronco Idol will be held in the Constitution Hall in the Nye University Center at 7 p.m., where students can donate food to participate in a talent show. There will be more daily activities as the week progresses. Go and show your Bronco pride. Winter Glow is still looking for volunteers on Friday, December 6th. Winter Glow is the kickoff to the holiday season at UCO, and it features an evening of fun and free winter activities open to all. Volunteers will help run the Santa picture area, monitor assigned rooms, and dress up as a character to read stories. Those interested in volunteering must be registered by 11.55 p.m. Tuesday, November 5th. For more information, reach out to the Winter Glow Instagram page or email Audrey Ellis, the Director of Personnel. Like mentioned before, Edmond has seen some fairly nice weather, but will it continue during our homecoming activities? Carly Torbett will have your full weather breakdown when we come back. Stay with us. Rugged, rough, built for the road ahead. Sometimes I feel like a shell of a man. Commercials are fake. What you're feeling isn't. Call or text 988, Oklahoma's mental health lifeline. The University of Central Oklahoma grows and thrives. We move forward, daily living the Bronco way, being reflective of our neighborhood, community, history, and Oklahoma. This is what has made us who we are. Oklahoma's Metropolitan University, the third largest university in Oklahoma. This 
is where movement is. This is the University of Central Oklahoma. Good afternoon and welcome back. We are going to look at some of this weather we got going on today. We are sitting at about 89 degrees right now, mostly sunny outside. Winds coming in from the southwest at six miles per hour and humidity is at a 23% and it is making our um, making it feel just a little bit hotter than it is, but nothing too crazy. Um, taking a look at our allergy index, as we can see, tree pollen is nowhere to be found, so that's always good, but our ragweed is still up there and that's probably what's causing us to feel those little bit of allergies but our thank goodness our grass and our mold spores are pretty low compared to the last couple weeks looking at our current conditions across the state you can see that um at the metro area we are at an 89 we are hit we're about to hit back into those low 90s high 80s um it's about pretty much the same across the entire state we are our low spot is going to be up in the panhandle though with guyman at 82. Tonight we are going to be uh, sitting at about 60 degrees, going to be clear outside. Winds are going to shift just a little bit and coming, be coming in from the southeast at 4 miles per hour. And our humidity is going to go up just a little bit to 50% with that 0% chance of rain, sadly. Looking at tonight across the state, as you can see, we're kind of uh, we're kind of a little bit the same all across the board. Panhandle is just a little bit different. They're at 45. Metro area is going to be at 63 degrees with Ardmore and Lawton kind of in that lower 60 range as well. Going into tomorrow, like I said, these next couple of days, we are going to be looking at those high 80s, almost 90s. In the southern part of the state, they are hitting 90s tomorrow, like in Altus and Lawton and McAllister. But looking at our seven-day forecast, we are going to be looking at those higher 80s these next couple of days, and then we are going to drop back down into um, – we are going to drop back down into the 70s this weekend with that small chance of rain on Saturday and Sunday. Shanice and Jeremy – how are you feeling about this weather? Are you going to be, do you have any plans for homecoming weekend? Are you scared that it's going to rain? Or are you excited for the rain? I've actually been outside. You know, a lot of the homecoming activities are outside. So I made my hat yesterday. I'm just glad that we have good homecoming weather. What about you? I'm super excited. We do need the rain, but I don't want it to necessarily rain on our parade either. I'm pretty excited about that small chance of rain, though, on Saturday. I mean, it's something, I guess, right? Something to cool it off, <laughs> yes. Thank you, Carly. Coming up next, find out what actor will star in Christopher Nolan's new project. And which film has officially surpassed Barbie domestically? Abby Avers will have all of your social media news when we come back. You wish. Miss you guys. Blue skies, smiling at me, talking about blue skies, do I see? to making plans, you are the best. What about those barbecues you plan in detail for your family? Or your daughter's first costume party? It was out of this world. The same way you plan each detail for those moments, start planning to protect you and your loved ones from a natural disaster. Sign up for local weather and emergency alerts. Prepare an emergency kit and make a family communications plan. Protecting your family is the best plan you can make. If you need to do something to feel okay to drive, you're not okay to drive. Don't drive buzzed. Are you really sure this is all going to fit? <laughs> oh, it'll fit. I got that. All right. When hauling anything, ensure it's secure. Losing your load is dangerous for all drivers. We want everyone to make it home safe. Help make Oklahoma safe by securing your load.
Welcome back, Broncos. I'm Abby Avers here with all of your social media news. Baywatch actor Michael Newman died Sunday at 68 years old after being diagnosed with Parkinson's disease in 2006. Matthew Felker, Newman's close friend and director of the recent Hulu docuseries, After Baywatch Moment in the Sun, confirmed the news Monday on his Instagram saying, I lost my hero yesterday. As I told him before he left this earth, I will see you again, I promise. Our thoughts and prayers are with Newman's family and friends during this time. Marvel's hit movie Deadpool and Wolverine has officially surpassed the Warner Brothers Barbie to become the 12th highest grossing domestic release, earning over $636 million in North America after a re-release in 1,500 theaters. While the film was higher domestically, Greta Gerwig's film still remains larger globally with nearly $1.5 million. Deadpool and Wolverine is the second highest grossing film of the year globally, with $1.3 billion, just behind Inside Out 2. Zayn Malik, former member of the band One Direction, has postponed the U.S. leg of his upcoming Stairway to the Sky tour in the wake of bandmate Liam Payne's passing. The 31-year-old Pillow Talk singer shared the news Saturday, just four days before his tour was set to begin in San Francisco on October 23rd. Malik posted on his Instagram story saying, Given the heartbreaking loss that experienced this week, I've made the decision to postpone the U.S. leg of the Stairway to the Skies tour. Love you all and thank you for un your understanding. Actor Tom Holland is set to star alongside Matt Damon in Christopher Nolan's new project that will be a 1920s horror film about vampires. The film is expected to begin shooting in early 2025. This would be the first collaboration between Holland and Nolan, though Damon has worked with the director twice before. Holland, fresh off his acclaimed run in a London stage production of Romeo and Juliet, was reportedly high on Nolan's list for the movie for some time. Taylor Swift kicked off her final leg of her Eras tour on Friday, but not without some surprises. As she took the stage, the pop star debuted several new outfits, including a new bodysuit, alluding to her reputation era, marking the first time she has done so since launching the tour back in March of 2023. The singer is well known for hiding Easter eggs in her posts and performances, and many fans are speculating with the new outfit, Reputation Taylor's version will be coming soon. The Eras Tour has just three more stops left before it concludes the over a year long tour. That is all I have for today. I'll send it back to Shanice and Jeremy at the desk. Thank you, Abby. Coming up, another Bronco star, one player of the week. And the men's golf team finished playing the Washburn Inventational. Find out how they did when we come back. I was raised to believe in the power of possibility, to always move forward, but never forget where I came from, to value hard work, ingenuity, and hospitality. On one hand, my people are rough and rugged. On the other, refined and elegant. They taught me how to love beautiful things and cherish my past, to seek out adventure, eat well, and to have a good time. So I keep their traditions alive every place I go. They call me Oklahoma City, but you can call me the modern frontier. Central News as a whole, you got to be in those different areas, like being on camera, being off camera, being in the control room. And so I feel like that is what prepared me most about being in the workplace. U Central and the Mass Comm Department has provided me all the tools and the fundamentals that are needed in order to thrive well and thrive fast at my job. Maybe it's time to hit the road and visit a place where stories unfold. This is the land of the ultimate road trip with sights old and new on Route 66. There's fun to be had, so much to do, and a few new surprises before you get through. Oklahoma has the most miles to share of Route 66. It's really quite rare. 
TravelOK.com will show you the way. Come see for yourself this iconic highway. Bronco football remains the talk of the town this week after their shootout victory against Northeastern State on Saturday. One of the Broncos' star players got the attention of the conference again. Running back Jalen Cottrell was named the MIAA Offensive Player of the Week for the second time this year. Cottrell thrilled fans by running for 202 yards on 16 attempts, becoming the first Bronco to run for 200 yards since Chandler Garrett did in 2019. Cottrell leads the MIAA in rushing yards, rushing yards per carry, rushing touchdowns, and rushing yards per game. Cottrell and the explosive Bronco offense will be back in action against Pittsburgh State this Saturday at 2 p.m. for a top 10 homecoming showdown. We'll have more coverage on this massive game as the week progresses. And while we didn't have shows last week, high school football in Edmond still pressed on. Deer Creek is no longer undefeated. They played the powerhouse that is Jinx in the 918. The Trojans shut out the Antlers 28 to nothing. The good news for Deer Creek fans is that there's still a threat in 6A1 with a 6-1 record. The Antlers have another big game this Friday against Norman. Edmund North lost for the fourth straight time, dropping one to the Mustang Broncos with no H, 45-27. The Huskies are 1-6 on the season with a trip to Enid on deck. The Edmund Memorial Bulldogs hosted the Owasso Rams in a big district matchup this past Thursday. They lost for the first time in over a month in a Ram beatdown 46-14. The Bulldogs will battle the Westmore Jaguars this Friday. Speaking of Westmore, they were the first team of the year to lose to the Edmond Santa Fe Wolves. The Wolves went down the road to defeat the now 2-5 Jaguars 21-17 and will travel to Owasso in search of their second win. Back over here at UCO, volleyball is in the driver's seat of the MIAA standings. Here's a look at those standings. Nebraska Kearney does currently sit in first place, but that's only because they've played one more conference game than the Bronze and Blue. Missouri Western is following close by, sitting at 7-2, and, and three teams are tied for fourth with records of 6-3. and three. We still have a ways to go, but the Broncos have eight games left in the regular season, and the teams in the hunt have seven remaining. The Broncos will be in action tomorrow night in Hamilton Fieldhouse, battling the newest member of the MIAA Conference in the University of Arkansas Fort Smith. The Lions boast a 11, an 11-9 11 and nine record, but they've dropped their last five games. Game, is, game time is set for 6 p.m. To the golf course, Central's men's golf team took the trip down to Topeka for the Washburn Invitational and had solid showings. In Kansas's capital city, the Broncos finished second in this event with a score of three over par, finishing just two strokes behind Missouri Western. Individually, the Chos had three golfers in the top ten. Baylor Bostick finished tied for fourth at one under par. Bennett Baldwin had an even score, good enough for, to tie for sixth and Jordan Wilson finished just behind Baldwin with a score of one under par. Central will wrap up their fall season next week deep in the heart of Texas for the DBU Classic next Monday and Tuesday. And finally, the National Basketball Association is back for another season, and it all starts tonight. The action starts with an Eastern Conference rivalry between the defending champion Boston Celtics as they will hang their 18th championship banner while hosting the New York Knicks, led by Jalen Brunson and the newly acquired Carl Anthony Towns. That game will start at 6.30 p.m. Then Towns' former team, the Minnesota Timberwolves, will play against LeBron James and the L.A. Lakers. The Timberwolves are hoping to make the NBA Finals for the first time in franchise history, while LeBron James and Anthony Davis seek their second ring together as Lakers. That game will start at 9 p.m. Both games will be broadcasted live on TNT. The Thunder's first game is Thursday, and I cannot wait. Jeremy and Shanice, how excited are you that the NBA is back? Ian, I'm from Colorado and a huge Nuggets fan, so I'm actually super excited. Well, that's who the uh, Thunder play on Thursday. It'll be Russell Westbrook returning, or the Thunder will be heading to Denver to take on Russell Westbrook in his debut game with the Nuggets. I'm super duper excited for basketball. I grew up in a basketball family. I'm mostly excited to see the Thunder is still going to be, you know, keeping up with their little TikToks, their little locker room shenanigans. But yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited. Thank you, Ian. When we come back, see how these dogs celebrate Halloween. And Carly Torbett will have our last look at weather. Rugged, rough, built for the road ahead. Sometimes, I feel like a shell of a man. Commercials are fake. What you're feeling isn't. Call or text 988, Oklahoma's mental health lifeline.
much difference can one vote make? Since 2023, more than 60 U.S. elections have been tied or won by just one vote. So this fall, you or a friend could be the tiebreaker. And that could make all the difference. People are more likely to vote when encouraged by a friend. So use your power to decide this election. Make sure you're good to vote and encourage your friends to make a voting plan at votevotevote.com. The University of Central Oklahoma grows and thrives. We move forward, daily living the Bronco way, being reflective of our neighborhood, community, history, and Oklahoma. This is what has made us who we are. Oklahoma's Metropolitan University, the third largest university in Oklahoma. This is where movement is. This is the University of Central Oklahoma. Welcome back. The Myriad Gardens wrapped up their Pumpkinville season with their spooky pooch parade on Sunday. UCO's Hope Whitmer went to the event to see what it was all about. The Myriad Gardens partnered up with Midtown Vets to put on their spooky pooch parade last Sunday, October 20th on the Devon Lawn from 3 to 4 p.m. Stacy Aldridge, Chief Marketing Officer for the Myriad Gardens, shared her thoughts and details of the event. As part of the grand finale for our um, Halloween activities here at Myriad Gardens. Today is the last day of Pumpkinville, but then on our last day, we always have our Spooky Pooch Parade sponsored by Midtown Vets. It's an opportunity for people to bring their pets out and um, dress them in costume. A lot of people dress in, co in their own costumes to match the pets. And it's just a really fun way to um, get out on a beautiful day. Um, you know, share this experience with the community and, um, and show off your pet. With around 30 entries for the parade and over 100 in attendance, there was an apparent love and appreciation in the community for their furry friends. Um, for probably at least the last five or six. So it's, it's been an annual tradition for quite a while. You know, as a dog um, mom myself, uh, you know, just getting to see all the, the cute puppies is so fun. And people really just embrace it and really get into it. And a lot of people come just to watch. Um, they don't even have pets, but they just want to come and see it and support and cheer them on. Reporting to you live, Hope Whitmire for U Central. Sounds like it's going to be pretty nice tomorrow, hopefully so. Carly's going to have your last look at weather. Thank you, Jeremy. Looking at our hourly forecast, we are looking at about 5 p.m. today. It's going to be sunny at 88 degrees. Hitting at 6 o'clock, the sun is going to set at about 645. It's going to be clear outside, 85 degrees. And then later on, whenever we're seeing that little nice little moon up in the sky around 7 o'clock, it is going to be clear and it's going to be 79 degrees. It's going to be nice weather tonight. That is all I have for you today. Back to you guys at the desk. Well, it sounds like we're having good weather this week, luckily for our homecoming activities. It's yeah. still a little bit warm for fall. What do you think? A little warm for my liking right now, for sure, yeah. But I mean, I'm just it's glad, October. Right. <laughs> I'm just glad that it's still good. Well, that's all the time we have for today. I'm Shanice Hopkins. I'm Jeremy Ramirez. Thank you for watching, and have a good night.